Hello to all friends and fans of the pulp, paper and bioproducts industries. Welcome to our exciting Spectrum podcast, where today we'll be talking about one of the latest developments for pulp mills in the recovery island, a low emission recovery boiler concept that was developed under the Circle to Zero initiative from Andritz. The new concept will reduce NOx and dust emissions remarkably. I am Mark Rushton and I will be your host. The recovery boiler has come a long way since it was first invented in the early 1930s. At the time, it was a revolution and is now often described as the beating heart of a pulp mill as it performs its duty of recovering the inorganic chemicals, burning organic chemicals, so they are not discharged from the mill as pollutants and also recovering heat in the form of steam to generate power. Over the years, that first revolutionary recovery boiler design has developed and evolved into a showcase of sustainability for all pulp mills around the globe. The latest developments have now resulted in an innovative concept to reduce dust emissions almost to zero and NOx emissions to a very low value. The foundation, therefore, has been laid in the Circle to Zero initiative from Andritz, which aims at achieving zero emissions, both liquid and gaseous, and zero waste at pulp mills. So today we are delighted to welcome Andritz experts Hamilton Brandau, Technology Director, Recovery Boilers, Naveen Chenna, Director, Research and Innovation, Recovery and Power Side Streams, and Kaspar Skriva, Global Product Manager, Electrostatic Precipitators and Fabric Filters. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, for inviting us. Thanks, Mark. So, first of all, let's start with a salute to the recovery boiler and all the development work that has been done up until now, where it has become, as often said, the beating heart of a pulp mill. So, um, Hamilton, what can you tell us about the evolution of the recovery boiler? The recovery boiler design and function has come a very long way since its invention back in the 30s. Safety, mechanical design, process performance, operational controls, environmental emissions make the broader recovery boiler unrecognizable when compared to the first ones. Also, initially, the recovery boiler was used primarily for its ability to recover chemicals efficiently. From cooking. Energy production was only back then a secondary benefit. Now, the surplus energy generated from the black liquid stream in a modern under its recovery boiler provides a major economic benefit by either reducing costs for purchased power or by creating surplus green energy that can be sold to the grid for additional revenue. As one of the pioneers, Andres has led the industry in gaining a higher power to heat ratio from the recovery process and has several substantial ongoing research programs to further maximize it. Okay, thanks Hamilton. This is really good news and it seems that there's uh, a lot of work that has been done. But moving on, there is still more work to be done to develop the recovery boiler even further to make it even more of a showcase on the environmental front. Can you tell us what the challenges are when it comes to emission reduction and, of course, why it's a necessity to do so. Uh, Hamilton, let's stay with you. Yes, Max, thanks. In general, environmental emissions from the recovery boiler have decreased substantially over the last decades. For instance, CO2, dust, and sulfur emissions. But this trend is not applicable to NOx, which still requires new technology to enable a further decrease in its emissions. China has recently seen a rapid tightening of the regulations when it comes to NOx emission limits, and pattern can be expected to happen in Europe, leading the world to the similar condition. Okay, thanks very much for that, uh, Hamilton. Naveen, anything to add? Yes, I agree with Hamilton. We must not forget that around 70% of the NOx is coming from a pulp mill, which emits from the uh, recovery boiler. This means if a pulp mill produces about 1.5 kilograms of uh, NOx per ton of pulp, about 1.2 kilograms is coming from the recovery boiler. 
if we deep dive into chemistry most of the combustion processes are oxidative in nature as nitrogen present in the fuel and combustion air tend to form nitrogen oxides which are so called nox contains mainly nitrous oxide and small amount of nitrogen dioxide generally nox are divided into fuel nox and thermal nox however recovery boiler is excellent in its own function it only form no fuel nox additionally recovery boiler have oxidation and reduction zones in the combustion uh, process which means that nox that is formed in a oxidative zone will reduce significantly in the reduction zone isn't it amazing when we are designing the boiler we can optimize the nox emissions to very good extent but not enough for tightening regulations therefore we must need a secondary measure to reduce nox further okay thanks for that navin so can you tell us what andrids has been working on to approach this emissions challenge and what results have been achieved so far for the last 2 years we have built and operated a demo plant containing various solutions at a pulp mill in uh, in finland along with our earlier studies in sweden after testing different technologies including electrostatic precipitators fabric filters and catalyst we have devised proven ways to reduce nox emissions from recovery boiler by as much as 90% competing technologies that reduce nox by secondary methods uses harmful chemicals and produce lot of effluents our solution operates in completely dry conditions which mean that we don't produce any effluents okay thanks for that navin this all sounds very promising can you tell us a little bit more about how this technology concept works the reduction of nox is made possibly by secondary methods which we have configured by using a fabric filter casing for recovery boiler uh, dust after esp and selective catalytic reduction the fabric filter ensure low dust emission safe operation of the scr catalyst there are no other references of this configuration in pulp industry worldwide with the demo plant tests showing normal collection and release of the dust on fabric filter surface. Okay, thanks for that Naveen. Casper, you're an expert in this area. So, can you enlarge a little bit more on that uh, and explain a little bit more about the technology applied? Yes, I can, Mark. With the SCR as part of the flue gas treatment, we can reach NOx removal efficiencies of 95% and that is uh, already more than needed. but since the uh, scr technology has a high degree of flexibility it will be easy to design to current needs and to adapt to future upgrade scenarios and as navin mentioned uh, an additional benefit is that the scr does not generate any waste byproducts when it comes to the particulate emission reduction Uh, with a conventional esp it has been possible to reach levels of 5 to 10 mg for some time now uh, the emission limits they range from 10 mg per normal cubic meter in in china we have values up to 70 in brazil for example and in europe we see around 20 to 30 as the limit but even the lowest of these limits will be a problem for the scr it will simply pollute and block the catalyst and we will see a rapid decrease in the nox removal efficiency so therefore something needs to be done regarding the particulate emissions and it has not been straightforward how we can adapt the conventional esp technology to achieve a continuous ultra low particulate emission the esp also has a general weakness 
which is sudden emission peaks that may happen due to mechanical failures inside the ESP. So we have to look for a different concept which can provide this ultra-low emission continuously on the particulate side. The solution is a fabric filter, which is well known from other industries like iron and steel, waste incinerators, cement mills, and so on. And by applying fabric filter technology, we get a continuous particulate emission less than 5 milligram, which is what we need for a good SCR operation. And a benefit of taking this route is a further step down in particulate emissions, where we will reach an all-time low and we get very close to zero. Okay, thanks, Casper. Very technical. Um, so let's assume I'm interested in this solution. How can I get it? Do I need to purchase a new recovery boiler? Well, uh, in the Air Pollution Control Division of Andrews, we have all the products needed, and there is a solution for any type of project. For retrofits, uh, the obvious challenge is space requirements, but it's usually solved because the concept is flexible in the overall design. For greenfields, on the other hand, we have the full freedom to integrate the new flue gas treatment concept with the recovery boiler and design a cost-optimized solution. At the moment, we see an increasing level of retrofit activity in China. Since the mills need to do something, to reduce NOx emissions on the existing fleet of recovery boilers. We also see activity in greenfield projects. Like all other air pollution legislation, it has been China that moves first. We expect that the rest of the world will follow, and we are well positioned for this with our Circle to Zero initiative. Okay, thanks for that, Kasper. Um, Naveen, what further work is being carried out by Andritz under the Circle to Zero initiative? We have many exciting developments ongoing within Circle to Zero initiative. Namely, we are focusing on flue gas emission reductions from recovery boiler and lime kiln power boiler and whatnot. Recycling and reducing non-process elements within the pulp mill, reduction of solid side streams from the pulp mill, reduction of fresh water intake and many more exciting projects. Great. Thanks a lot, Naveen. Thank you. Um, so summing up, um, can we um, have some comments from Hamilton, please? My pleasure, Mark. It's quite amazing how the work never stops in closing the loops and reducing the environmental impact of equipment and process at pulp mills. In fact, it has become a whole new process within the pulp and paper industries. And Andrets will be leading the technology when these new tightening regulations come. Okay, thanks, gentlemen, for an excellent and fascinating discussion. Uh, if our valued listeners would like to find out more about this technology or any of the other Circle to Zero development projects, please contact Naveen directly at his email address, which you will find on the show notes. Thank you, gentlemen, and goodbye. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, for the great discussion. Thank you. Thank you.